So the first video is about pages 375 to 377 in the book, and it's the ideal gas equation. This is a great equation. Why? Because it works for any type of gas. It doesn't matter if it's hydrogen or oxygen or nitrogen. And you realize this when you um, uh, did that virtual lab, that it didn't matter whether the gas particles were heavy or light, you'd still end up with the same width. It didn't matter if the gas particles were heavy or light, you ended up with the same pressure. So we assume gases are ideal, we end up with the same answer no matter what the gas is. So even if a problem says it's oxygen gas or argon gas, it doesn't matter. Okay? So the ideal gas equation is PV equals nRT. P is pressure, V is volume in liters. And this is the biggest difference from when we did chapter 18. Volume could be anything, but now volume must be in liters. Okay? N is the number of moles. R is the universal gas constant. And T is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay? Again, this is a difference. Or no, actually, that isn't different from uh, chapter 18. Temperature must always be in Kelvin. Okay? Now, the universal gas constant is symbolized by the letter R. It can come in two forms, 8.31 liters, kPa, over moles times Kelvin. Okay? Or the R value can be 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin. <clears throat> so, the units on your pressure will depend on which R value you use. If you use this R value, your pressure will be in kPa. If you use this this R value, your units of pressure will be in atmospheres. Okay, So we'll do a couple examples, and you should be able to solve for any of the variables, P, V, N, or T. Okay, So let's start off with usually what um, people want to find, and that is the, the pressure. Okay, So let's do an example problem. Let's say we've got 3.5 moles of carbon dioxide gas at um, 65 degrees Celsius and a volume of, let's make it hard right off the bat, 200 milliliters, okay? So anytime you attack a problem, and I've said this since the beginning, write down all the information you know. Don't try to skip to trying to solve it. Write down your info. That'll help you this year. It'll help you next year in physics. So you got the number of moles. You've got your temperature. As soon as you write the temperature, go ahead and convert it to Kelvin. Okay? And to convert to Kelvin, you must add 273. So anytime you're dealing with gases, right away, go ahead and convert it to Kelvin. Okay? The pressure is what I'm trying to find, okay? And the um, volume is 200 milliliters. Now what I said was volume must be in liters, okay? So suppose they gave this to me in cubic centimeters instead. Well, one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So you should just be able to change that to milliliters. And you know that 200 milliliters, that 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter. So once you do that conversion, you will get 0 0.220 liters. Now I have all the information that I need in order to solve the problem. 
Um, I want my pressure in KPA, okay? If they don't specify, you can pick either one, but I want my pressure in KPA. If I want my pressure in KPA, then my R value has to be the one that's got KPA in it. Okay? So I have all of my info. I've got my moles. I've got my temperature. I've got my volume. And I've got my R value. Okay? So I've got all of the info that I need. That's the first thing you do, is write down the info you need, convert your temperature to Kelvin, convert your volume to liters. Then you're ready for the next step. Before you even think about plugging into the equation, you need to do this. The equation is PV equals NRT. Okay? So what I'll do is I will solve for pressure then I will plug in my numbers. So I have 3.5 moles. Notice how I'm putting units on everything. 8.31 liters kPa over mole Kelvin times my temperature which was 338 and divide it by my volume. Okay. The units should cancel so that the only thing left are units of pressure. So moles will cancel with moles, liters will cancel with liters, Kelvin will cancel with Kelvin, and the only thing left is kPa. So my pressure will be in kPa. So now we can plug it into the calculator. I'll have two sig figs. So my answer will end up being 49,000 kPa. Without sig figs, it'll be 49,153. But with sig figs, it'll be 49,000. Okay? Let's do one other problem. Okay? Um, suppose that we want to find the volume. Okay? What is the volume? Actually, no, I don't want to do that one. Um, uh, Let's do, let me erase that. How many moles are needed for um, two point zero decimeters cubed at um, zero degrees Celsius and um, point eight two five atmospheres. Okay? Um, so the real problem is really units on all this stuff. That's why I say 90% of the time it's units. So let's write down our volume is 2 decimeters cubed. Well, you need to know the relationship between decimeters cubed and liters. 1 decimeter cubed is a liter. So that means my volume is 2 liters. My temperature is 0 Celsius. But go ahead right away and convert it to Kelvin by adding to 73. So my temperature is 273 Kelvin. My pressure is 0.825 atmospheres. And I want to find the number of moles. Since my pressure is in atmospheres, I have to use the R value that is in atmospheres. So you'll notice in this problem, the number is different. It's 0 0.0821, and the last problem is 8.31. Now that I have all my info, now I can write down my equation. I want to find moles, so I'm going to divide both sides by RT. Okay. 
Now I can plug in the numbers. So my pressure was 0.825. My volume was 2 liters. My R value is 0 0.821 liters ATM over moles Kelvin. And then my temperature was 273 Kelvin. So plug into the calculator. I'm going to need with two sig figs 0 0.074 moles. Okay? The units cancel. ATM with ATM, liters with liters, Calvin with Calvin. The only unit left is moles.